Well, this is my next stop, and I'm in Sperry, Oklahoma. This is uh, Louise and Ed's location. They've got a nice setup. He's got a Mack truck back there. I want to get some pictures of him. He's got a workshop. He's a ham radio operator like me. He's not into it right away, but he, he's like me. He gets into things when he's in the mood to do it. And uh, does other things when he's not. So... Nice area. Boy, it's flat. Looks like the grass is all dormant for the winter. These guys are leaving in like 10 days to travel in their RV. I think they're going down to for Thanksgiving down in uh, Texas. Alright, let's go back and take a look at his Mack truck. Okay, so this is Ed's Mack truck. He's got a park back here. I'm not sure what year it is. He's going to be out here shortly. He'll be able to tell me. I don't see a sticker on it anywhere. I can find out what year it is. But pretty cool. Got a huge winch on the back of it. Must have been used for towing. But uh, <laughs> everybody likes Mack trucks. What do you all guys like Mack trucks, I know that. That's pretty cool. So there's the specs on it. Diesel Mack B61. Thermodyne. Thermodyne. Got the old bulldog up front. Very cool. some other stuff out. Well, it looks like he's got some tractor, John Deere tractor. I guess those barns over there are his too and uh, that horse is some girl's horse that they she rents the stalls for the horses. So still in Sperry, Oklahoma. Oh, by the way, that Mack truck of Ed's was a 61. It actually matched the model number. So anyway, this is Ed and Louise's. I'm getting ready to leave this morning. It's uh, Monday morning. They had hook up here in water if you needed it. Um, you can see that in the Boondocker wall for information. But Ed's got another property down south of here about, I don't know, 12 miles or so. And I'm going to actually stay on that one for a couple days. That doesn't have any water or any electric hookup, so I'll be totally boondocking on that one. But um, he's got to go down and mow the property, so I'm going to follow him down here in about 20 minutes to uh, go down. He's going to mow, and I'm going to set up shop down there for a couple of days. All right, so it's going to be it here from Ed and Louise in Sperry, Oklahoma. And I'm going to be heading over to New Mexico on my next stop. So, Ed's uh, all loaded up, I think, or getting ready to load up the old lawnmower in order to go do that uh, mowing down there. He's a ham radio operator, and he does have a ham radio antenna there set up with his main mast, and it looks like three poles out there. I think he said it was a GRV. Anyway. That's it from here. Take care. Okay, Adirondacks for me here. I uh, have moved off of uh, the main location where Ed and Louise lived here in uh, Oklahoma. And now I'm down on uh, Ed and Louise's other property. This is 95 acres. Uh, Ed had come up with me, showed me the way, and he had to mow this little circle here. I guess he's got a uh, another boondocker welcome. Thanksgiving time, so I'll be heading out Wednesday morning. Today is Monday morning, so I'll be here a couple nights. But I guess they had a fire here several years ago, and it like devastated their woods here. You can see all the trees over there that are more than likely they'll probably not make it. But 
that's terrible. I guess he had several sites in here for, there's a water hydrant over there and electric he had for the campers, but I guess all got, all the infrastructure just got burned up. As you can see, I got my uh, two solar panels set out, my 60 water and my 100 water, keeping my uh, onboard battery banks charged up. So that's going to be it for right now. Um, I'll keep updating you as things change. All right. Talk to you guys later. Take care. All right. So I'm uh, stopped at the uh, Stafford Air and Space Museum. It's on Route 40. It's on my route. It looks like it's five bucks to get into the museum. So uh, this is the lobby of the Stafford Air and Space Museum. We've got the Kitty Hawk, and that's a replica of an SR-71. All right. Now I'm going to head into the uh, going to head into the museum now. This is just in the lobby. They're doing construction here. I guess they're adding on another 40,000 feet to the museum. They're going to be putting in a full-size SR-71, I believe she said. But uh, there's the Palo patches. ISS. I did talk to the ISS. I talked to a Russian astronaut on ham radio one time. I think, I think it's a lot bigger than this now. So childhood stories of Stafford. High school letter jacket. Pretty cool stuff in here. Looks like his Air Force uniform. He's a three star general. Probably when he retired. So that is actually a piece of lunar sample presented to Stafford 2004 by President Bush. And it was gathered uh, on Apollo 17 in 72. And that over there is his Congressional Space Medal of Honor presented to him by Bush.
playing with the Russians. A lot of stuff in here that I'm used to seeing working in the sign business where they've uh, done things that we used to do and we used to hang signs and pictures and stuff. Looks like a full-size replica of uh, First Flight Kitty Hawk. Cockpit of a MiG-21. Got no switches, bells and buttons in there. I'd say so. replica of the bomb dropped over Hiroshima by the Nola Gay. That's a sidewinder missile up there. An AM AIM-9 sidewinder. This is a B-61 thermonuclear bomb. This is actually what's dropped out of aircraft today. Well, that is the cockpit of a Cessna. T-37 training cockpit. Hmm. 
interesting. Well, this is the Bell X-1, first aircraft to break the spot, uh, sound barrier. Piloted by none other than Chuck Yeager. So this is actually the cowling of a 747 engine <laughs> turned into a doorway. Sounds like it's pouring rain outside. Unfortunately, my bike's getting wet. The you only know, thing I covered out there on my bike was the LCD display. Massive engine over here we're going to take a look at. Lots of stuff to see in here. This is actually a chunk of the tread, the platform that would carry, well, in this case, looks like the space shuttle. <laughs> That's a little 3D model of it. But you can see how big the, one of the treads are. Chunk of the tread. I may be stuck in here until the rain Players, I can hear it pounding on the roof in here in the museum. <laughs> Not sure what the rocket engine this is for, but we'll go around and check. I'm sure it's part of the Apollo. Apollo Soyuz right there. This looks like it's going to be a future exhibit for the space shuttle cockpit, and uh, looks like it's on, in production right now. They just got it stored right here for a minute. That is a Soviet, Soviet NK-33 rocket engine. <laughs> That's actually just one rocket engine from a Saturn V. From the picture I took, it looks like it had like four of them. It's huge. I'd say it's about a 12-foot diameter on that. Working parts of the Saturn V engine. Got a couple of autographs here that I got pictures of. Looks like Gene Saracen maybe and Tom Staff. These are rocket engines for a Titan II missile. Looks like it's also signed by both gentlemen again. Tom from Gemini 6. Nine and Gene, and I can't make out the last name from Gemini Nine. Looks like he flew with Tom.
this actually is a, a, one of the solid rocket boosters for the space shuttle on loan from Ohio. It was, it's a big boy. actually a mock-up of the shuttle bay. Which is pretty cool. I'd say it's about a, I don't know, 15, 20 foot wide at the top. 